no <laughs> i hit it but i but right before i talked but apparently i didn't but i can say it all again if you want me to no that was great oh my gosh you guys this is so fun okay so this is what's the power of mary Kay. so like jen said we met just because um we have a mutual friend ashley she i needed roommates at leadership and i sort of knew Ashley. I met her in Hawaii on the top trip, um, but I was looking for roommates and fun ones and ones that I had never met before. And so of course she said, well, come and stay with us. Oh my gosh, you guys, I knew nobody in her room. It was so much fun. They accepted me like, like they've been best friends with me since we were two, especially Jen Enlo. We just had so much fun. They made fun of how long I take to get ready in the morning. What? Uh, which I do. Um, we just had a blast. And you guys, that is what is so much fun about Mary Kay, the friendships and the connections. And do you guys not know, like if you've been to Mary Kay, you know, if you've been to Mary Kay event, like those women you hang out with and spend time with, like they're your best friends you never know you had. Like you had them all along, you just didn't know it. So, you know, congratulations for being here today. Congratulations for being in Mary Kay and just being a part of our Mary Kay culture. So I am so excited. Thank you, Jen, for like accepting me to like asking me to teach. And I think I was one of your firsties when you started these lunch and learns. Cause I don't know when that was, but I, I did yes. whatever. Go yeah, ahead. it was a long time ago, but yeah, you did it for me before too. Um, so I, well, my name's Jamie. I live in North Carolina and that's why I was asking you guys before, where do you live? Because that is what's so much fun is seeing how we have such a reach in Mary Kay. And we've like literally got everyone on here from coast to coast. Um, so I live in North, uh, Concord, North Carolina. So Charlotte, basically. Um, I'm originally from the Midwest. That's why I don't sound Southern. I am married. I've got two girls. They're just turned 15 and 12. Um, I've been in Mary Kay uh, almost 14 years. I started when my 15 year old was one year old um, because I was holding her in my arms. And I'm like, I can't go back to that crappy full-time job I had. I don't wanna leave this baby. I love her. I don't wanna put her in daycare. And so I quit that crappy job and that crappy job, it was a good job. I mean, I help people find jobs. I worked in staffing. I managed to really, you know, high volume staffing company. So that was great. But what was greater was that baby. And so I quit that crappy job. I didn't go back. I was holding that baby and we got really broke because our money ran out. And I'm like, I got to figure out something to make money. And my husband said, I, I got to go back to work, but he didn't want me to leave that baby. And so lo and behold, here comes Mary Kay hopping down the lane. Um, and so Long story short, I my mom has been a Mary Kay consultant since 1983, and she always spoke these words into me. It's Jamie, you'd be great at Mary Kay. Jamie, you should sell Mary Kay. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm too cool for school. I got a college degree. We don't do things like that. Well, here we are almost 14 years later, pink Cadillacs, diamonds, trip, friends, just the whole Mary Kay shebang. And so that's a little bit about me. So now we're all best friends, right? Because you know who I be now. Um, so today, what I wanted to talk to you about, because I feel like we can all relate to this, and that is growth. And hopefully we can kind of come up with some things. Hold on. I got to I'm. I don't want to be the speaker. Okay. Okay. I can't be distracted by just seeing my face. I got to see you guys. Um, so feel free to blow up the chat. Feel free to smile and nod or like spirit fingers just because, you know, that's what we miss by being in person is just that human interaction. So anyway, we'll translate that on Zoom. Um, so anyway, I want to talk to you about maybe some areas that are stunting your growth. Uh, and I thought this was so appropriate because of the time of year. It is so beautiful this time of year. And I feel like it's beautiful anywhere. I'm guessing even in super cold Colorado and Missouri, you guys have little sprouts, right? Like some kind of sprouts of spring. Yeah. Okay. Um, and like I grew up up north in Michigan, which is like even this time of year is still kind of nasty. Um, and now living in North Carolina, the spring and every season change is just glorious to look at like flowering trees sunny days bumblebees buzzing just 
the sprouts coming out of the ground. So green and lush, it is springtime in North Carolina and all over the place. And so it just kind of made me think about, you know, God uses everything for growth, <laughs> does he not? I mean, literally everything grows, everything grows for a reason. And um, I just feel like sometimes we get in a place where we're stuck or our growth stalls out, or um, there's maybe just some things we're doing to sabotage proper growth. Do you get me? Can anyone feel me? Um, so let me just tell you something real quick. Of everything I'm about to share with you, the good news is about growth, you guys, is that we all have equal opportunity to grow. So none of us have a leg up on the competition of each other. None of us, because we've been in longer in Mary Kay, we've got more potential to grow. Absolutely not. Uh, doesn't matter what we look like, what background we come from, what size we are, shape, background, just it doesn't matter. All of us have equal opportunity to grow. Isn't that exciting? Okay. Um, and of course, I'm sure you guys have heard this smile. If you have, when you stop growing, you start dying. Have you heard that? Lou Holtz said that. I don't know who Lou Holtz is. I feel like he's probably a sports person, but I don't know. If anyone knows, put it in the comments. Um, but he said, when you stop growing, you start dying. And um, he said, so get in motion and grow. No status quo. Because really, you guys, you're either moving or you're losing ground, right? Okay. So um, let's kind of start with basic needs to grow. First things first, it's springtime. All those sprouts you look, you can see outside of your window. What are the three basic things they need? Sunshine, water, and food, right? And so are you getting that? You know, if you feel like your growth is stunted right now, are you getting your basic needs? Are you getting sunshine? Because you need that. Are you getting water and are you eating? It's important. And I'm gonna get more into that in a second. Um, because I do believe that when you stop feeding yourself those basic needs, you're gonna stop growing. We know that, right? Things start dying, okay? So um, I wanna take a look at some of the other things that could be stunting your growth, or maybe they're not stunting your growth. And if I looked at the definition, what does it mean to stunt your growth? It still means you're growing, like it referred to little kids, like when you take babies to the doctor, the pediatrician, and like if their growth is stunted, they're still growing, but they're just growing slower, okay? So that's what I want you guys to kind of think about right now, where you're at either in life or in business, like, are you, are you growing fast? Are you growing slow? Are you just kind of capped out and stunted, okay? Um, it's defined as impaired growth and development. Maybe, um, okay. All right, I got off track. I get easily off track. That's why I'm keeping my notes. Are you ready? All right, so I'm gonna screen share because I have a great visual. So number one thing we have to talk about if you feel like your growth is stunted. Who has ever been to a Linda Tupin training? Linda Tupin, yes, okay. What is the one thing she is obsessed about other than her choices? It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Who has heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? And probably if you've taken a psychology class, you've heard it, okay? So these are the basic human needs. And I'm pretty sure all of us on here are human. And so we all need these needs. And I feel like this is something, if you want more information on it, you can absolutely Google it because that's what I did. Um, but to, it, to really understand the hierarchy of needs, this probably will diagnose whatever it is that stunts your growth right here. So we're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to give you some other business things that maybe are stunting your growth right now. Is that cool? All right. So let me screen share. Um, Okay, so here we go. Here's his hierarchy of needs. And it start, you start at the bottom and you go up. And every day we all wake up, we start at the bottom and then we work our way up the, the hierarchy or the pyramid every single day. And so um, this bottom, this physio physiological um, 
If you don't pass level one, you can't go to any other level. So that's what's really, really important, you guys, to hear this and understand this, is that this goes in order the way it's placed, the way the colors are from bottom to top, because you can't like jump to different places if your basic needs aren't being met at that bottom level. So that bottom level, the easiest way to think of it, and I'm a Cliff Notes kind of girl. If you guys remember what Cliff Notes are, like just give me the nitty gritty, the meat and potatoes. Here's your Cliff Notes of Maslow's. So this is physical survival. So exactly what I started talking about. Water, food, air, and um, sunshine, right? Which is basically air. Um, if your body is worried or consumed and you're not able to eat or sleep or breathe air, you can't progress. Does that make sense? That is the number one place you need to go, okay? So, you know, I know there's people in life that aren't progressing because they don't have a home right now. Um, probably, unfortunately, the people in Ukraine, they're, they're at the bottom right now, right? And, and they're gonna have to progress for, for those basic needs before they can move forward, right? So that's the, the bare minimum, food, air, water, the things we need to stay alive, okay? The next level, once you have those needs met, then you progress to the next level. The next level is safety. That's the orange level. This is, um, as a human, we have a desire for need, for order, predictability, control. Um, and this is typically fulfilled by your family. It's fulfilled by society. It's just all those important safety needs. Um, you know, if we are in a situation where we're eating, we're drinking, like we're getting our basic needs, but we're in an environment that we don't feel safe, we can't progress up Maslow's, if that makes sense. Um, the third level, so once you, you, you're in a safe environment, your third level is love and belongingness. Um, this is like interpersonal relationships. This is friendships. This is affection. This is trust. This is love. Um, you know, every single human and even my little dogs here, they crave affection. They crave love. They crave being cuddled up. And so we as humans do that. If, if that need isn't being met, we can't progress. So maybe ask yourself, is my growth stunted here? Is, you know, and some of this can get really deep. Um, okay, number four is the green level. That's esteem. So this is self-worth, self-respect, um, sense of accomplishment, sense of status, sense of prestige. Does Mary Kay not fulfill our esteem needs? Oh my gosh, yes, they do. That's why so many women, what they're missing in life is this is the camaraderie, the fun, the excitement, the celebrating to success, the praise, the encouragement that Mary Kay does best. And then that top level, that self-actualization, self and this is what Mary Kay really does best. And that is when you self-realize your potential. This is where you realize who you be. This is when you are on top of your game. This is your peak experience. Excuse me. This is when you have a win. This is what, like every single day you really, you guys, every single day when you get out of bed, you want to start at um, red level and move up to blue. Blue is where you find your win. You get a booking. You get a yes. You get a great uh, um, compliment from your customer. You have that self-actualization moment when you re realize, hey, maybe I can do this. Maybe this, I mean, this Mary Kay thing is going to kind of work out. That's a self-actualizing moment. And again, Mary Kay provides that. You guys, so many women out there, they don't ever have that. Never, never. They go to work, do the job, come home, take care of their family, go to bed, and start it all over the next day. That esteem and that self-actualization that they don't ever get that. And so I think sometimes when people come into Mary Kay, they're like, what kind of time warp did I just come into? And it's a time warp that they need, that we all need, right? Because hello, it's psychological. This was developed back in 1940 by, uh, I don't know his first name, Maslow. So um, anyway, with all that being said, I hope that kind of painted a picture for you of um, important things that have to be accomplished 
before you can move forward, before you can excel. Um, this is other a great thing that you can keep in mind when you're working, maybe at your full time job or when you're working with a team member of yours and why she's not progressing, why her growth is stunted. And it could be because one of those needs aren't being fulfilled on that hierarchy. Um, so that's a little tool to put in your Mary Kay toolbox to always go back to and always review because there really isn't any other way of getting around it. Um, OK. So I'm going to look in the chat really quick. Do we have any questions? Oh, my background. Oh, isn't that great? It's wallpaper. And I wanted my shirt to match. Isn't that so fun? Um, OK, OK, perfect. All right, so we're going to move on. So now I want to give you some things that could be stunting your growth in your business. So we're just going to say either A, you figured out, you just had a light bulb moment like, oh, I'm not progressing because I'm stuck on level whatever hopefully that, or maybe you're like, no, I pretty much have all those levels in check. Okay, perfect. If you still feel like your, stunt is, your growth is stunted, um, I'm going to give you a couple other things to kind of take a look at and maybe kind of diagnose. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to give you some remedies. Okay. So in your business, here are four filters you can run your business through if you're feeling stuck or like you're not growing. Okay. Your first filter is a power start. Are you holding a power start monthly? A power start is 30 faces in 30 days. Are you having at least 30 humans try Mary Kay products with you, no matter virtual, in person, hybrid, uh, in the back of a dark alley? I don't care. Are they trying Mary Kay products on their face? At least 30 fabulous individuals. Okay. And it really stops there because if you're not seeing 30 faces a month uh, and you're like frustrated, start there. I promise you, I promise you it will fix all ailments. Okay. All right. So let's say, oh, girlfriend, I am seeing 30 faces and I am still stuck. What is wrong with me? Well, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. There's just a little tweak you need to make. So that's the tweak we're trying to fix. Number two filter to run your business through is your target market. Are you working with a market cohesive to who you want to create a customer base with and a business with? Um, there were times in my business where I was working with um, just people that, uh, we'll just say broke college students that just didn't have a dime to their name and loved the products, but just didn't couldn't find the money to buy, purchase a product from me. And I got caught in a cycle of booking parties with them and booking parties from them and booking parties from them. And I was frustrated and, you know, so take a look at your target market. Are you working with the right individuals? And um, if you're not sure, talk to your director because she can kind of um, diagnose like, who's your correct target market? I think so many times people get frustrated because they're working with um, a certain type of market that's not cohesive to growth, if you will, okay? All right, number three filter is your skill set. You know, if you're seeing the faces, you got a slam in target market, but you're still not getting results, it could be your skill set. You know, have you fine-tuned the art of holding a party? Do you know how to open your party or your facial? Do you know how to close it? You know, I know we flip from in-person to virtual to just all these different things. Like we had to redo our skill set two years ago when COVID hit and we did all virtual. And so maybe your skill set is what you really need to fine tune. And you guys, that's easy. You know, Mary Kay gives us all those educational tools. Your director gives you great education. You just have to practice. And really you need to make some cue cards and you have to Practice in front of the mirror or record yourself. Or I mean, I practice with my kids. I just You need to practice your skill set. Can you open? Can you close? Can you ask for the sale? Can you present the sets? That should be before asking for the sale. And then can you rebook her and ask for the sharing appointment? Skill, skill, skill. That's the easy part of Mary Kay. Okay, and then the fourth filter you need to run your business through if you're still feeling stuck, like if you have all those boxes checked, all the Maslow's checked, all those three filters checked, and you're still stuck, it could be your self, your attitude. Could it be your attitude isn't where it needs to be? 
Um, and I'm going to talk more about that shortly, but this is something very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It is so important, you guys, to always be growing in your attitude skill because attitude is a skill set. You know, nobody wakes up excited and happy and jumps out of bed in the morning. Not everybody does that. Um, I don't know if you guys have done that strengths finder thing, but my number one strength is positivity. And so I am always excited, always positive, always ready to go. But no, I'm human. No, no, no. Attitude is everything, you guys. It's everything. And so sometimes you really need to do a checkup from the neck up on your attitude. And something really good you could do is ask someone that you respect their opinion and you respect their position and ask them what they think of your attitude and tell them to be honest. That's a big, big, big deal. So three kind of subtopics of those different filters and your attitude is um, money management, time management, and emotional management. Now, I, I do believe the money and the time management go back to that skill set, skill set filter, um, because as a business owner, you're your skills in growing your money and growing your time management and being a master of your time and a master of your money, it's a skill set, you know? And that's something you have to remember is that growth is ongoing. Um, and so really kind of tapping into those two skills of making sure you're managing your money like the businesswoman you are, and also you're managing your time properly. That, you know, if you've got big hopes and dreams, um, but you're giving it those hopes and dreams one hour a week, you're not going to have the right output, if that makes sense. So those really are a skill. And Mary Kay does those really well, too. We've got tons of resources, tons of information and um, education on how to help that. Um, and then, of course, that emotional management piece uh, really goes back to your attitude. And I'll tell you guys, if there's one thing you really want to harness and tap into on growing is being emotionally mature. And I'll tell you um, from the from a brand new baby consultant to a, a retiring national, the 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 difference between the two, one of the main differences is mo um, emotional maturity. So if you want one area of focus, really working on you um, and who you be. So you can be more. It's not that you always have to do more. It's really just being more and, and being more intentional with who you be and who you're going to be. Um, so, okay. Let's, let's, let's dig in a little bit further. Um, okay. Um, the other thing I kind of want to refer back to are your strengths and your personal strengths. And you guys know that God made us all perfect, individual, fabulous, amazing, built for growth. You know, he equipped each of us with different strengths and different talents. And so maybe that emotional piece that's tripping you up is that comparison game, which is nasty and it's bad and it's ugly and you're going to have to get rid of that. And so if you've never really understood strengths finder or really kind of tapped into that, it's pretty stinking awesome, you guys, because it teaches you who you be and why you are who you be and why Jen is who you who she is and why we are totally different. Um, and so it's silly for me to compare myself to her because God gave her certain gifts. God gave me certain gifts. Why are we comparing that? Does that make sense? Comparison game is, can be really tough and, and really um, very easy to do. Um, okay. The other thing maybe, maybe could be holding you back in, in, from growth is what you're consuming. Um, so as I said, I have a 15 year old and a 12 year old girls, two girls. Um, let me see some spirit fingers. If you have teens or have had teens. Okay. Well, you know, it's not for the weak and weary. And so I had to have a conversation this week with them on what they're consuming and what they're filling their brains with. 
And the same goes for us. You know, if we're constantly listening to um, murder mystery podcasts and juicy love novels and binging on Netflix, okay, but you know, garbage goes in, garbage comes out. Maybe it's too much. Um, I told my girls, I said, the same reason you shouldn't be filling your brain with that trash is the same reason why we don't have the news on in our house. It's trash and it pollutes and it's poison. And so you have to choose and take a look at what is going in. It's a big thing, you guys. Um, and then the last thing that you may want to take a look at that could be holding you back is your self-talk. So, you know, what are you saying to yourself? Um, if is what you're saying to yourself, would it be okay if you heard your kids or grandkids or nieces or nephews saying that to themselves? Because if it's not in alignment, then why are you saying that to yourself? Like if you wouldn't allow your daughter to say that about herself, why are you saying that about yourself? Um, and that self-talk will take you so far, either up or down. And so really, um, being really honest with yourself and almost like fact checking yourself every so often, like, oh, what did I just think about? Oh, why did I just think that? That's terrible. You really have to get yourself in check with that. Okay, so um, I've got some remedies for you. And I think in the chat, I think we've had some friends have figured out some remedies, I think. Um, but let me let me give you some that I came up with. So. Um, Again, when you're feeling stuck, maybe I'm all about making index cards. Like if I'm like, I really need to remember that or I'll forget. I make index, index cards or sticky notes. So maybe you need to remind yourself, like when you're feeling stuck, okay, let me go back to Maslow's. Are all my levels checked on Maslow's? Okay, great. All right, fine. Let me look at my filters that were was shared with me. Are all my filters in check? And you'll probably find the solution yourself. But maybe just go back and reference that. Um, and the other thing, you know, is you really, if you, let's just say, oh my gosh, like there are five things that I, I have areas of growth. There's five things I really need to work on. Um, where do I start? Okay, take a look, pick one or pick two for the next month and then maybe the next three months and really tap into those and grow them. Um, Cause you can't do it all at once, right? Like that's a big hot mess. And we try to do everything at once just because we're women and we're awesome. And those, that's just how we roll, but you can't. And so maybe pick one or two areas of growth and really tap into that. And then once you grow in that part, then you can move on to the next one. Um, that's one strategy or remedy, whatever you want to call it. The other thing is if you're looking at maybe like that list of five and you're like, well, I don't know which one to start with. Um, take a look again on start with Maslow's because uh, really you can't progress in your business if like one of those Maslow's aren't being hit, especially like, you know, food, air, shelter, water, safety, love and belonging. Okay. Um, but really focusing on yourself, you guys, and really growing yourself. And, you know, I, I believe that um, when we focus on ourselves and get ourselves in check and have our quiet time and our devotion time and really grow, you know, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Um, what's that other one? Physically, emotionally, spiritually. I think that's it. Um, that's when it'll affect everything else. And so really working on you and growing you because here's another great thing. Do we have any control freaks? Me, I love to control stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like most women are control freaks. But anyway, um, the cool, the good news is, is if, if you're a control freak, you can control you. Like if you're like, I am all jacked up, my business is jacked up, my husband's jacked, my family's jacked. Oh my God, my life is a mess. Start with you. Uh, because that's, you can't control anything else. You can't control anybody else, but you can control you. So start there. Um the other thing, another remedy is really kind of going back to self-talk, but really thinking of your business and honoring the potential 
of what your business could be. Honoring the potential of what your business could be. You know, I think so many times people that make the mistake of half in and half out, like, well, if this Mary Kay thing doesn't work, I'll just, da -da 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 -da. That, that I'll just, da -da -da -da, you're, you're totally out. Um, really having a vision, having a mission, having a desire. Oh my gosh, I could maybe one day drive that pink Cadillac. I could maybe be a million dollar woman one day. I could have that dream house I've always wanted with 20 cats and five dogs. Honor your potential of what could be you guys and like, like really think about that. You know, um, NSD Sharon Buck says so many women are dream handicapped. And so start dreaming again. Um, and then a couple other things as we're wrapping up um, for, you know, kind of remedying if your growth is a little bit stunted is you every day, you know, ask yourself, how am I doing today compared to last year? Like, what have I excelled at? Right here, right now, what was going on last year? How, what am I doing better than I did last year? What am I doing better than I did last quarter? How am I doing better la than I did last week? Maybe when you go to bed or wake up tomorrow morning or even go to bed at night, think, how did I do better today than I did yesterday? You guys, that's like a test for growth. Like you'll find something that you've grown at from the day before. And that's growth, no matter how small or how big it is, it's growth. And that's what we want, right? Um, the other, you know, kinds of questions. I always like, you know, they say, you know, do your accolades. Say, you know, tell yourself what you want. Step in your potential. And I'm like, but I don't know what to say. Um, so here's some questions you could ask yourself. Um, is, am I better? Am I better at, am I better at being a wife? Am I better at being a mom than I was yesterday? Am I better at being a leader? Am I better at my booking calls? Am I better at managing my money? Um, am I stronger? Am I wiser than I was yesterday? And that's the thing with growth, you guys. Every time you learn something, you're, you're getting smarter. And we want to be smarter, right? Um, and then the last thing I want to just leave you with on growth is, you know, what I said before is, God equipped us with so many gifts and talents and so many gifts and talents that we never harness because we're so focused on what we're not doing and what we don't have, what um, Susie Smith has that I don't have. That's ridiculous. He didn't give Susie Smith what he gave you and you're not even using what he gave you. So you got to honor him by constantly raising your standards of excellence raising your standards. I had someone say to me, Jamie, don't you think your standards are a little too high? And I thought about it. And I thought about it. I thought, ew, no, I don't settle for crap. I don't settle for mediocrity. Gross. She's not in my life anymore. Um, but, you know, are you constantly raising your personal standards, your personal beliefs, and what you believe, you know, at the end of the day, what do you believe? Um, and the one more thing that I got to remind you of is as you're on your growth journey, and that's what you guys have to keep in mind is growth is inch by inch. Mary Cash says inch by inch is a cinch. Yard by yard is hard. So every single day when you lay your head on bed, think, okay, what did I do better today than I did the day before? And that's growth. That's growth. And you have to remember one more thing is that when it rains, if we're talking about growth, it's springtime, there's a lot of rain this time of year, right? And it helps grow the grass and the trees and the bushes and the flowers, is that, you know, God makes it rain for a reason. And so when you are growing, you got to celebrate that rain. You have to celebrate the rain because it's there for a reason and it makes you stronger and better. And I mean, really, is rain ever really wasted? No, it's not. It's there for a reason. So Remember that as you're on your growth journey. Okay, friends, that's what I got for growth. I hope you are super excited. Oh my gosh, girl, that was so powerful. I'm so glad someone reminded me to hit record. Um, everyone would have been so mad had they not had it. And I think it's something we can go back and listen to over and over and over again. Jamie, you are amazing as always, girlfriend.
always. Does anybody, I'll let a couple of people go if anybody has a question or wants to affirm, Jamie, what you, your takeaway was. I know some can't because they're actually muted for actual lunchtime, but let us know. I you might have to unmute. Are good. I know they're all coming in. Oh, look. These are all sensational. See how many lives you touched today, girl? This is amazing. I love these. Well, I, uh, yeah, it's what I need to hear. Sometimes you just got to look in the mirror and be like, all right, sister friend, it's you. <laughs> you got it. Get it together. And it's time. And it's time, girls. We have plenty of time till seminar, but not if you procrastinate. Mm. You have to move forward that inch today. What can you do better today to get you closer to what you're trying to get? You have to do something different to get something you've never had. And so thank you. Thank you all. Oh, look, everyone just say your blessing, how much they loved it. Jamie, it was powerful. Thank you, girlfriend. We'll be seeing each other in Scotland, having more fun. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. We're going to have to meet up with all these other girls already finished. I better get after it. I know. So Anne's already done. She's like, you girls better hurry it up and get over here. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I need my friends with me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you all have an amazing Thursday and an amazing April. We'll be back again next week and I will get these out. I promise you all. Bye ladies. Have a great Bye. Thursday. Thanks, Jen.